this whole marketing message that I believe is contributing to the failure rate of real estate agents in our in in, in the industry. And it's marketing messages like like this that I think it's they, they know exactly what they're doing because it's exactly what agents are hoping to hear, which is easy. Mm-hmm. It's all marketing messages around it's easy. There is a better way. You don't have to cold call. Do this other thing. And what the marketers are doing and they're genius at it because they understand psychology is they're creating this common enemy, which in this case is, we'll call it cold calling, just for the sake of conversation. They're taking something that they themselves, their worldview, them, they being the marketer, says, I don't like to do this activity. Personally, I don't Mm -hmm. like to make outbound prospecting sales calls. I don't like receiving them. And so I'm going to make that the common enemy. And I'm going to make a marketing campaign around that that everybody will resonate with. Because here's the truth. No one likes to make cold calls and no one likes to receive them, right? So we can buy into this uh, uh, hypothetical truth and say, listen, stop doing all of that. Come over here, do this easier thing. And it's exactly what the realtor is hoping to hear. It's exactly what they're hoping to find. And when they come across an ad like that or a marketing message like that, they jump all over it, Mm -hmm. not knowing that on the other side of the offer, they find themselves in the exact same pain point than they were when they were just having to make the calls themselves. Now, here's the other truth before we, we get into this. The other truth is, It isn't a debate around does cold calling work or does cold calling not work? Because if we were to put up on stage all of the people in the United States in real estate who earn more than seven figures in taxable income, you would find as many of those people have a direct outbound prospecting business model as you would any other model. You'd find as many or more, that'd be my argument, because we run in those masterminds. I'm friends with most of them, and they're all outbound based. And so it isn't a fact of does it work, does it not work? We know for 100% certainty that it does work. Mm. It's just the fact of, oh, you don't like it, so therefore you're going to position it to not work, because you know the vulnerable realtor who doesn't also like to make calls, they're not good at it, who's addicted to information, who's searching hell and high waters for the path of least resistance, or they say to themselves, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way. There's got to be a different way. There's got to be a different way to do this. They come across a marketing message. It's like, hey, cold calling is dead. You don't have to do that. Come do this other little magic show, and you can get clients on demand, and it's exactly what they're hoping to hear. Ben, what are your thoughts? Well, it it might be an ad on one of your videos because yeah. I've seen them while they're learning how to gold call, right? Um, it's just unfortunate because a lot of people say things don't work without context for themselves, right? Or context of how it is being posi- positioned by somebody that is saying it's working, right? I, I find that um, we talk a lot about foundation pieces. So jumping in, diving into something and just giving it a try for two days, just like we were talking about last week, not giving it the amount of time. So instead of listening to the wrong person saying it doesn't work, why don't you try and find somebody that it is working and listen to them or the people that are telling you it isn't working, ask them at what level have they tried it and just to have context. Yeah, it's a great point because it's not that this works or that doesn't work or this is better or that's better we talked about this too everything works if you work you know Mm -hmm. and so the other question needs to be asked well let me ask you mr marketer what are you selling that's the other thing if cold calling doesn't work what are you going to say next oh here comes the pitch and then they sell the shiny object right and then the vulnerable realtor 
who is hoping and praying for a message just like that, lets themselves off the hook. See, I knew there'd be a better way. I knew there'd be an easier path. Buys the offer. And it could be any marketing gimmick. It could be, it could be, you know, internet leads. It could be this widget thing that goes out into markets and says these are the most likely sell. What it's going to come down to at some point, you're going to have to do something to get a result. And that mm-hmm. part you're not going to like. And this has nothing to do. We'll, we'll go, we'll kind of bring it down just so everyone can can uh stay with us. This conversation doesn't have anything to do with cold calling. That's what's so interesting about it. This has to do in this context, cold calling is the chicken and broccoli and the working out. And the marketer is, hey, just take this little fat loss pill for three easy payments of $19.99. And you working out, that's old school. Oh, tracking your calories, that's the thing of the past. Tracking macros and lifting weights and eating healthy, you don't got to do any of that. Just take this little red pill. And it's just three easy payments of $19.99, and you will lose weight. And that is what works so well with humans. Yeah, Colton, go ahead. Yeah, I think the context thing is so important, Brandon. What you just said a couple minutes ago is it works if you work, but then there's a caveat to that. It's will it does it make sense for you in in the time and place of your business right now? Like marketing works, content it, it works, but does it work for you right now? Because the missing piece of context for marketing, for direct mail, you know, for for networking, a lot of this stuff is it works. But it takes a long period over a, lo- uh, a long, you know, a, a lot of money a lot of the times over a long period of time for it to work, you know, like, yeah. And so when we break the business down to its first principles, essentially, number one, people have to know you're in real estate. Number two, you have to talk to enough people about the fact that you're in real estate. And if they need any real estate needs, you got to meet with people about real estate things. Like, that's it. People got to know you're in business. You got to talk to people who might be doing business and then have a persuasive enough value proposition that they work with you. And, you know, that's all masked by shiny, easy stuff where, you know, if you just knew that you had to do those things, let me give you an example. I talked to an agent, uh, this was probably six months ago. I just thought of this, but he had a mentor. You know, a lot of companies give you a mentor, EXP, KW, he had a mentor. And his mentor, this lady was a certified B A, like she was incredible, right? She was making a million dollars a year. She made a million dollars a year the last six years in business. And and this was his mentor. And he was working with her for about eight months. Okay. And in those eight months, he made a whopping zero dollars because the missing piece of context wasn't that the mentor couldn't teach him what to do. It wasn't that he didn't learn anything from the mentor. It was that the mentor that he had two had two factors at play. She had a way of doing business he couldn't replicate. Mm-hmm. You know, he he didn't have a big database. His husband, which the kid didn't have a husband, but you know, her husband had this thing with work and she just got so many referrals from his work and she was the other thing at play was her style of communication. She was the type of person, and I know we all know this type of person. She could say anything in any type of way to anybody and get away with it. You know, yeah. and she could just be all up in your face and tell you exactly how it was. And so the point is, a lot of the times, those easier systems, if you will, like we're talking about, although they can work, it might not be replicatable for you with where you're at in your career. Well said. I mean, even the story was great, Colton. And even before that, the way you articulated just this business into its first principles is so true because the nuance is the thing that gets lost because there's so Mm -hmm. much emotion. You know, Mm -hmm. you, you don't know... To your point, all of the 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 nuance that Susie has that you don't have, and the variable is Susie, and you're not Susie. You, yeah. you don't know when you hear about somebody really succeeding through doing a marketing campaign in a neighborhood where they're the neighborhood expert, and you say to yourself, "Wow, that seems like a great way to do business." What's missing is the fact that that person has been marketing in that community for 14 years. They've invested multiple six figures into that farm. They they own Facebook groups. They do mass events in that group for over a decade. But the vulnerable real estate agent who's in pain right now in search of hopefully the easy button 
hears that person on a podcast talking about it, starts and launches their farming program and doesn't get a listing in a month and says, dude, that what, farming doesn't work. No, no, it's not that farming doesn't work. It's that you don't work. You, you're not good enough yet. You didn't do it long enough yet. You don't have the, the credibility yet. You don't have the brand recognition yet. And so everything works, again, if you work, you know, and to mm-hmm. say something doesn't work when there's proof that it does, I think is an emotional statement. I don't know what, Ben, your thoughts are on that. I, I look at a lot of people selling something. They, they're selling you the idea, whatever idea. You, you were using farming or marketing to a, a specific geo region. Um, and people are selling the idea and they stay at 40,000 feet. I think if you are going to take on one of these strategies, whether it's shiny or not, I think you really need to make sure you align with somebody that gives you the context we're talking about understanding the tangible and untangible skills or traits that you need, and then actually have a roadmap of steps to follow, like the actual integration of the process and Mm -hmm. and not just, you know, burn your old strategy and jump on the new one because of hearing, you know, the big picture 40,000 foot idea and seeing the result but really understanding the the nitty gritty implementation of it all before you align with somebody or or fire up a strategy. Well, all right. So I'm going to get into something controversial. I guess I'll hold my tongue, Cole. Go ahead. You say what you're about I, to say because I'm going to get into yeah, it. Yeah, I, I just wanted to button this topic off with, with one last thing. And it's to say that if you have fallen for you know the, these marketing messages or the easy path like number one you're not alone i i was there myself you know mm. like my my first coaching program you know after a year and a half two years of being in the business struggling i remember vividly one day sitting in the car i was my girlfriend and I, my wife now addison and i were living at her mom's and i had been in real estate i knew what to do i know i knew i had to be prospecting i knew but for some reason, I just wasn't doing it. And I remember one day leaving to go get uh, Del Taco, and I and I looked in my account to just make sure I had like a couple hundred bucks left in my account, and I just sat there just like for ten minutes, just sulking in how upset at myself I was because I knew what I had to do, and I just wasn't doing it. And so fast forward a couple months later, we go to this seminar, right? Ad- and Addison was there with me. My wife was there with me, and they got us, man. They got us. They had the thing. <laughs> They, they, they knew exactly. And, and again, my whole perspective wasn't, isn't to say that that coaching program, you know, that I had to borrow $8,000 from my wife, my girlfriend at the time to get into not saying it was a bad program, right? It just didn't make sense for me at that point in time in my life and in my business. And so if you did or have in the past ever made a decision like that, I don't know if you guys have heard of the term, the term sunk cost bias. Absolutely. Right? Don't fall into sunk cost bias. And, and if you have made a decision and, and invested into something that either maybe could have been a scam, because those are always out there, but oftentimes it's not a scam. Most most people out there, most marketers, um, the majority of the products out there are actually some decent products. It's just a lot of the times we don't take the responsibility to understand that if, if it is is or isn't for us. But don't allow the bad decision to prevent you from making a new better decision. Because if you do that, you've permanently locked yourself into a bad decision. And so a lot, you know, a lot of people say, Oh, coaching doesn't work or oh, I've done that before. And just be careful of that thought process because you're locking yourself into a bad decision from the past without being able to kind of, you know, grow past it and make the next new right decision for your career. Love it. Colton obviously ate his Wheaties this morning, just dropping some bombs. I love it. Yeah. I want to well before we move on to the next to- the, the the next topic I, I want to give a great example and some people are going to just absolutely have a tough time with this and be very very mad and that's okay uh, I can't make everybody happy but I'm just going to tell the truth okay please here's the thing when it comes to these these types of messages is these companies or marketers are actually the ones well 
they have to also bend on their own beliefs and their own standards because they know that selling something that is like discipline, focus, hard work, those messages don't work. I'm going to prove it in a second. And so even the marketers are for, are, are forced to change their messaging and go out there and promote stuff that maybe they don't even believe in because it works better. Let me give you probably the best example of this in real estate. You guys ready for this? Oh, people are going to get so mad at me, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm going to give you the best example of all time. One is, love him or hate him, Mike Ferry, okay? His message has been the same, which people get mad about. Hey, you know, that's all old school. And you could see on his YouTube channel, he has 56,000 subscribers. And then you look at his son, Tom Ferry, who seems to be the flavor of the week. Whatever the new hot thing is out, that is what he promotes, you know? And it works. He has 10 times the amount of subscribers. He has 500 and almost 50,000 subs to dad's 50,000 subs. And you could see, wow, it actually does work. If I just promote the shiny stuff, I can get all these people because, again, that's what they're hoping to hear. And dad keeps saying the same old thing. Hard work, focus, make the calls, have a routine, you know, follow structure, follow a, a schedule. Well, people don't want to hear that. You could see it play off into the real numbers. However, I would make the argument that if you have like, we hear this all the time. We hear feedback from people that are in Tom Ferry coaching, and that is exactly what it is. It's a it's a pitch for the next shiny thing. That every time I turn, I pick my head up, it's like, oh, get this thing and that thing and that thing and that thing. Well, I don't know about you guys. I mean, you guys are sitting on coaching consultations night and day. To be fair, I don't have, I don't feel like we talk to nearly in the amount of people who say that about Mike Ferry coaching. Like we're out, we we left it, it was junk, it was garbage, it was super shiny. They changed their messaging every single coaching call. They were asking me to do something. I, I never hear that feedback. And quite frankly, if I look at the per agent productivity between those two uh, organizations, between dad and son, I would bet my money that Mike has more successful per agent productivity than Tom. Because Tom, again, I respect him, but the, the part that I don't understand is how he, it just seems as though, based on the feedback that I'm getting, based on the content that I see, I mean, if you were to sit here and say, okay, what is Tom Ferry all about? Like, what is his strategy? It'd be hard to say. Yeah. <laughs> everything. The answer would be, well, well, everything. Whatever's new. Chat GPT, AI, farming, prospecting teams, brokerages, whatever's exciting, that's what we're about. And so I think that's very difficult for people to follow. You know, it's very diff difficult for a tribe to buy into this when the message is constantly changing. And that is why I think that messaging is so dangerous for agents because mm -hmm. agents get behind a message. They get, and that's why you've got agents that are diehard Mike Ferry agents, Mike Ferry brokerages. It's the same message for 50 years. We haven't changed who we are. This mm -hmm. is what we believe. This is the principles. This is our, the Mike Ferry selling system. This is what we know that works. It produces millionaires by the droves, by the way. By the droves, it's repeatable. And so, again, I, I think that might make some people mad. I'm not saying that Tom Ferry doesn't have value to bring. I know there's a lot of people that, that are huge fans. I just hear so much feedback uh, about the opposite. Mm -hmm. Thoughts? Yeah. You know, Mike, Mike's, Mike's like, uh, you know, John Wooden. You know, you put, put your, we're going to put our socks on right. You know, and we're just going right. to do the same thing over and it works and it works and it works. Yeah. Because you know? it's not what you teach. It's what you emphasize. This is what we yeah. talk about all the time. You know, people like agents want to, they if it's not new, they deem it not valuable. Well, I've heard that before. That's the, that's the thing that, that Darren Hardy calls the, the, um, the knowledge bias, or I, I think he might call it something else. I don't know if Colton, you remember what I'm talking about, 
where people are like, oh, I've heard that before. And because I've heard Mm. that before, I don't think that it's valuable. But then Darren says, well, it's not about whether or not you've heard it before. It's a matter of, are you doing it? Mm -hmm. And if you're doing it, have you mastered it? And if you Mm -hmm. said you've mastered it, do your results prove that you've mastered it? In other words, can we look at your bank account? Yeah. Can we look at your last uh, month's income to prove that you've mastered it? And you find quickly those people say, oh, I've heard that before, aren't doing it, haven't mastered it, and can't prove that they've mastered it. Mm, So good. Yeah. All right. Let's go into uh, the next topic. Colin, why don't you kick it off? Sure. Um, I guess it kind of plays to what we've we've been talking about, which which would be value stacking, right? And so what I mean by value stacking is really, well, and, and, and let me rephrase that. I guess skill stacking might be a better way mm. to put it. When I say value, I mean the value you can bring into the world, but from an internal perspective, your skills and stacking your skills. And so really just understanding, especially in the context of, of real estate, there's There's some key skills that you need to develop over your career and master to become a really good agent, not only for yourself and and the income you make, but delivering results to your clients. And so kind of wanted to touch on the different skills that we can master as an agent and then the order in which to master those really and focus on those skills. Yeah. Yeah. No, no doubt. Um, And I, I got to do this just because I can't. I don't want to forget to do this. And this has to do with just the last topic, gentlemen. I promise Colin will come right back to it. Yeah, yeah. But I saw something and I'm like, ah, should I do? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I have to. And so let me, this is how passionate I am about this topic of um, like these, the whole danger around people more interested in, in, selling something to an agent versus they are helping an agent do something this blew, th- this put me over the top i almost called you guys over the weekend because of this now if that curiosity loop isn't big enough uh then i don't know what else is but let me show you guys this i'm on the so, edge of my seat that's for sure <laughs> all right this 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 just took me over the edge okay so Let's jump into this. So I'm showing you right now Ricky Cruz uh, instant uh, Instagram, right? Now, the dude has been, I think anybody w- would say that he is known for what? Cold calling, right? Circle prospecting, cold calling. This is my point. Because that might not be the sexy flavor, the cold calling thing and social media is, listen to his last Instagram reel. You guys ready? Two, one. You need to stop cold calling and do this instead. Go to a brand new sexy listing or your boring front yard. Grab your phone, open up Instagram, and make a reel using this script. Houses just like yours are selling as soon as they hit the market. And if you're thinking about selling your house this year, you might want to think about this. Every single year, sales are so seasonal and they always drop off in the fall, which means the very best time to put your house on the market is before July 4th. If you're thinking about selling your home, I would love the opportunity to interview for the job to work for you. Just shoot me a comment or a DM to get started today. If you make this video, you're guaranteed at least one warm lead. So save this video and send me yours when you make it. You need to stop cold calling. All right. So did you guys hear that? Yes. Okay. So now that's not it. I could show you more. I don't know why this the the, the, the share screen. We got to fix that. But like, there's other stuff happening too. Like he for the longest time was like, dude, you don't need to be calling Fizbo's or an expires. Just circle prospect. Yeah, literally, I noticed that. Yeah, literally last week, he said, my favorite lead sources are Fizbo's and expires. It's like, well, yeah, dude, where have you been for the last 25 years? Welcome to the party. Yeah. It's, and I'm telling you, this has nothing to do with, I'm not, I'm not trying to, uh, it's not, nothing to do with him. It has to do with the market. He's finding that like, well, it's easier to sell views on sexier shit than circle prospecting cold calling. That's what this has to do with. Even Personally, though circle prospecting I, works. I love circle I mean, prospecting. 
I think it's just the way it's portrayed. Like, yeah, I have no problem with, hey, this I've tried this tactic and this tactic has worked, but it's the it's the way it's the positioning of like stop erasing everything you've talked about in the past. Stop doing all of that and now do this instead, as opposed to, hey, try this strategy. It's been working for a lot of agents or whatever. It's just the positioning, the marketing message of it, like you said, that kind of makes it a little iffy. Yeah, I have to question it. It's like, well, are you are you really trying to help the agent or are you trying to do something different? Because as soon as you come out with a hook that says, stop cold calling, try this different, that's called a hook in content creation. So every okay. agent who hates cold calling says, oh, yeah, let me listen to that. That's exactly what they're hoping to hear. Right. But the problem, again, this has to do with what are we doing here? Are we trying to help the agent or are we trying to, I don't know. I just, it's the messages like that that kill me. It's like, what do you stand for? You've been talking for the last mm -hmm. five years, cold calling, cold calling, cold calling, cold calling, circle prospecting. Now, all of a sudden, you're trying to change your tune. Why? Because you might get more views, more clicks that way? Don't know. I mean, certainly you could go back to the Mike Ferry, Tom Ferry thing. And it didn't work for Mike Ferry to, to have one message, but he hasn't changed. And his business is doing fine. His people are doing just fine. So yeah, t Ben, what were you going to say on that? Well, you know... He, he's obviously got a good following all all of that jazz like i would have just loved to see him say the the best thing to do in addition to cold calling in this season is keep calling but hey try this you yeah. know you know and he could have said that even in the intro but and just use the clickbait of of the title of stop cold calling maybe today and say today send this video and just continue to reinforce his message because we, we all agree cold calling works. Like he's been all over it, but does that strategy work? Sure, right? Are you going to do it consistently? Are you going to drop it once and maybe get one lead? Sure, but like maybe maybe try and oh. tie it in, you know, your, your, your overall strategy because it leaves you confused. Yeah, and then the whole like, the whole guarantee thing at the end, like do this one post and I guarantee you, you will get a lead or whatever he said. Again, this has nothing to do with Ricky. It's yeah. just like it's messages that that even the marketer right. is succumbing to to get the mm -hmm. view, to get the click. Like you're not going to guarantee like the agent does that and they're going to get a lead. Like that's yeah, you're it works because you're appeasing to a message that people are hoping they're finding by scrolling on everything oh i found it this is it right. this is the magic post yeah. and then they do it it's like well i didn't get a lead you know anyway did you did you i heard you ben saying oh yeah i saw that did you see that and, and think the same thing absolutely and i've seen it a couple of times like going back and man he he's all about circle prospecting to the grave like all circle prospecting and then all of a sudden he's talking about expires i'm like that's interesting i've never heard that before let me go back no oh, nothing right so you start to contradict yourself and i mean that's just exactly what we're talking about i think just like you need in real estate even in marketing content coaching like he's doing have a business plan have principles and stick yeah. to them have beliefs that's right. have beliefs what do you believe in and if your belief is well i'm just going to talk about whatever the shiny thing is the exciting thing is i don't know that that that's not the type of leader that i want to follow that's for sure 